pure experiences. Welcome to the voice version of the blog, Pure Experiences. You are listening to the article, Introspection 1, Experiencing the Self. Published on the 5th of December 2016 by Tharun Pradhan. Published on pureexperiences.blogspot.com Narrated by Charlie Jacob Introspection 1 Experiencing the Self Goal We will attempt here to gain a direct experience of the self. It only takes a few minutes. It will answer questions such as Who am I? Or what am I? Or what is this whole existence? The knowing is instantaneous, but when the mind comes back, it finds it hard to accept it, at least in the case of some people. The reason can be the presence of beliefs, beliefs such as it cannot be so simple, and doubts like it's all fine but my religion says otherwise, or science doesn't go for this. Prerequisites, just a sharp open, peaceful, and intelligent mind. Absence of distractions, at least for a few minutes. Brutal honesty, deactivation of beliefs, if any, at least for a while. Avoid making anything up, assumptions, hypotheses, guesses and all. It has to be very direct and self-evident. Read the last article in the Art of Introspection for details on how to do it without getting lost or confused. Your gains will totally depend on these prerequisites. Else, it's all just gibberish. Ask it. Knowing the self is very easy. Just ask. What is here and now? Mentally note what you experience or see. If you are not very relaxed and your mind is busy recognizing and classifying stuff with a live commentary running in your head, you may notice obvious object, objects that surround you, such as furniture, stuff, the room, trees, or people, as attention jumps from one thing to the other. This is the ordinary state of the mind. We need a relaxed mind with full attention to the question and nothing else. Zoom out more in your awareness. Include more things. You may now notice your body and its sensations, sounds. Include them in your knowing. Then zoom out more. Now you may notice some thoughts, memories, some internal chatter, some minute actions such as eyes looking here and there and random shifts of attention. Include them all without focusing on anything in particular. Be aware of everything without trying to name them or thinking about them. Disregard everything in particular. This will put the mind in somewhat relaxed state. Include the now relaxed mind in your field of view of awareness. What remains is just an experience of being here and now. You have arrived at a state of business. In other words, just existence, in essence. Next, ask. How is isness known? You will find that the mind rushes to memory or thoughts to answer it. But the answer is not there. There are just more thoughts and memories there. Include them into it. It also in isness, back to a neutral awareness of everything. You will find that even the question itself is a happening in isness. The experience of somethingness remains even when there is no reliance on memory or thoughts or external objects. It is a pure and direct experience. Next, deny it. See if it all goes away. You will find that even the act of denying gets included in what is here and now. The above question naturally leads to thoughts such as, I know it since I see it, or 
I'm aware of everything now and here. Or one can say, obviously, it is self-evident and clear that there is an experience. This will naturally lead to a question. What is it exactly that, ex- I- that is experiencing it all? What is this I the mind is talking about? You may find that there is a subtle shift of attention and a knowing of the experiencer happens. It's a shift from the object to the subject. The knowing of I am here, an aliveness. The identity also shifts to the exper- experiencer, and the I is now the very experiencer. You will note that nothing really changes, except the perspective. The isness is as before. You will also find that there is no need to perceive via senses or think in order to experience the experiencer directly. It is a very pure experience. Analysis. Now it's time to analyze it and codify it into definite language. Firstly, you have found that there is something. There is not nothingness. And that something is made known via an event, namely an experience. That's the bare minimum one can say about the all-inclusive knowing of thisness. You can be very certain of it. If you deny it, then who's denying it? There must be something even to deny and claim that there is nothingness. So the knowledge of nothingness is an impossibility. An experience is a necessity. When we include all contact, content in an experience without dividing them up, we can name it as a presence. Presence is self-evident and is undeniable. It's a certainty. The certainty is also an experience, a knowing. What exactly is certain of this certainty? In other words, what is having an experience? You will find that this is an an unnecessary question. The experience is. There is no necessity to invoke anything else. If you assume an entity that is having, having an experience, the experience remains as it is. And when you move, remove that entity, it makes no difference. The isness will still be there. When the pr- presence is stripped of all contents, you will find that it is empty. It has nothing in it. But it's not nothingness. Because one cannot get rid of the experience of it. A better word for it is emptiness. Emptiness cannot be many emptiness. Only a thing can be many things. When you asked, what is having an experience? You are demanding an answer in terms of something else. You just created a second entity. This entity is now familiar self. So the self is having an experience or is a receiver of experiences. But if you look closely, the presence never divides into two. You will find that the experiencer appears because the question demands it. Otherwise, the presence is self, itself. As soon as you ask the question, it simply shifts from being an experience to being an experiencer. Now try it again. So the oneness never becomes two. It merely generates an illusion of two in response to the question of what, it, what is experiencing the emptiness. The self is the presence experiencing itself. In other words, the presence makes itself known in the form of the self. It remains one. As an emptiness, it has no other options. This state can also be termed as pure consciousness. Consciousness being conscious of itself. So one can conclude only one thing exists, the presence. It experiences itself as self. 
when you keep in mind the definitions of both these terms, this is self-evident and undeniable. Why is there an experience of many? This is also self-evident. There are many things, many contents, objects, mental or physical, events, changes and whatnot. If it's one, why can we see it as many and when we narrow down the attention? The answer is that the mind creates the divisions when there are none. Remove the mind from the scene and it's all oneness. The mind can be stopped as it is merely a collection of processes. These processes produce an experience of diversity. And when the mental activity ceases, the diversity, diversity disappears and we arrive at the isness, the unity or the union. So the next question is how to stop the mind? The mentioned introspection describes it. When the attention is not focused on any single object or thought, or when it is not wound up in a steam of actions or thoughts, it is relaxed and one becomes aware of everything in a neutral way. It never stops completely, and that is desirable. Well, else you fall asleep. <laughs> Just relax it enough so that the usual recognition, cognition, recall, and imagination stops. It is necessary to keep the question in the background. If you relax too much, you will lose the question and the intent of the introspection and can slip into a trance-like state, useless for our purpose. It all took a few minutes. It was so easy and obvious. There are other tricks to arrive at the same knowing, and some oddly needed 20 years of hardships living in a cave or spending your whole life as a monk in the Himalayas. Probably such hardships are just preparations or a part of cultivation. I never did that, and hence I really have no idea if that would bring some kind of superior knowing, or if, if, if it produces more certainty. But if you try to find an uncertainty in what you just experienced, you won't find any. It is a very direct and solid experience. Try it again with your own variations and twists. Try falsifying it all. Seekers have done that for thousands of years. It still stands. But there's no harm in trying and seeing it with your own eyes. This kick starts your journey into the universe of self-inquiry. And we will do more introspection because there will be a thousand questions now. Pure Experiences you are listening to Pure Experiences by Tharun Pradhan. For more, please visit pureexperiences.blogspot.in.